Hi everyone, I have a shooting bow that I made just about when I started woodworking. Now, with a little over a year of use, I felt like upgrading it based on my experience. So yeah, let's make it. First of all, this is what I have been using. I use it as a regular plain board, edge plain board, and end grain shooting board most of the time. I can still use it, but the problem was, it's too thin considering the size. Anyways, I'll make these two shooting balls and I'll explain each of them as I make them and show how to use them at the end of the video. Okay, so I got this 3 quarter barge plywood. It's 2 feet by 4 feet and so pricey. I wanted 4 feet by 8 feet plywood for the price but I couldn't fit it in my car. Well, people usually say it's no good to hand plane on the plywood but I didn't want to use a sakura saw to cut it straight. So, this was my approach. Now, I really know the glue in the plywood is hard and it damages the plain iron quickly. The thing is, I don't handle plywood in general and it's just one time so I didn't mind it as much. Now, working on the edge plane board. This is easy that I just glued two different width plywood together and put the stop block and bench hook on it, which is a bigger and thicker version of what I already have. Well, if you feel it's awkward to use Japanese hand plane sideways, there is actually an edge shooting board called Suridai, and there is a Japanese hand plane even specifically made for this purpose. Oh, this one you see is the stop block and is relatively low. This is because this shooting board is only for the edge plane. So, it doesn't have to be high enough to protect the cutting material from tearing out like an end grain shooting board. After the glue dried, I put dowels in the stop block and put the bench hook. I'll demonstrate how to use it at the end, but let's move on to the end grain shooting board now. This one I'm making is my version of Japanese Koguchidai shooting board. I put the pine board as a base of the side fence to get started. I'll put the cherry board on top of it, but I have to be sure this is 90 degrees. Then, I worked on the cherry board. I was going to make this cherry thickness as even as possible, but I know I can't glue a board evenly, so I just cleaned one surface and put it on the base of the side fence. And, after the glue up, I leveled the surface and adjusted the 90 degrees. Now is a stop block. From my past experience, the stop block for an end grain shooting board may chip, so I made it replaceable. Basically, I just cut the rabbit on the base stop block and glued to the board. Yes, it has some holes to screw a main stop block in front of it. Then, I put the dowels from the bottom to reinforce the base stop block. Okay, here, I attach a main stop block with screws. The screws are into the main stop block, so the base one doesn't have screw damage when replacing the main one. The downside of using two balls as a stop block is, while just one side of the stop block needs to be flat if it's a single board, 
The main board of two stop blocks has to have two flat surfaces that are parallel to make 90 degrees to the side reference. Anyways, let's see how it works. This is the edge plane board. I made this line straight, but I hardly use this as a guide when doing hand plane. When it comes to an edge planing, the difficulty is coming from the fact you have to deal with two dimensions like I mentioned in the previous video. As far as the side of my plane is 90 degrees to the sole of the plane, I don't have to worry about one dimension, so I can focus on only cutting straight line to have a perfect edge. It makes a huge difference. If the cutting material moves sideways while doing a hand plane, Putting a coke sheet under the material will help you with stabilizing the material and will make things easier. And this is the result. It looks straight enough to me. Now the Koguchi Dai style playing board. Unlike typical western shooting board, I only use the sole of the plane as a 90 degree reference. This gives me a great advantage. Now I can tilt the hand plane to cut the end grain and I can even move the plane diagonally too. It's much easier than cutting it just by a back and forth motion. On top of it, you can use a little bit of water to soften the end grain. I use Japanese hand planes, so I really feel the advantage over the typical western style shooting board. And I'm happy with the result. Like I said, I'll work on a video about how I dimension lumber soon, and I made this video as a reference for it. But if you have these two shooting balls, you can actually dimension wood pretty well, but anyways, I got make more video contents. That's pretty much it, but let me thank my friends who bought my t-shirts now. Well. There weren't many orders, so I decided to show my appreciation to them rather than making a small profit by the sales. The thing was, there was only one day left considering wax dry time, so I really rushed to make a few boxes in a day and my wife helped me with making the wrapping stuff. I can't say the boxes were perfect at all, but I tried to make Uniqlo t-shirts look as high-end as possible, so hopefully they enjoy it. And I guess that's really it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I would be happy if you liked the video and happier if you subscribe to this channel. If you have any suggestion to my video, it's also welcome. See you!